My name is Tim Gosling. I'm a furniture designer. Since an early age, I've had a passionate love of the classical tradition, particularly as it relates to buildings, their interior spaces, and the furniture made for them. One of the most important materials linking all of them is wood, a material with many strengths and great beauty. The stone columns and ornaments of ancient Greek temples develop from the uprights and cross beams of primitive wood huts, and wood continues to play a central role in our lives today. The period with which my work is most closely aligned is the Renaissance, and I'm particularly interested in the designs produced when these Italianate influences made themselves felt in England. Just like these works and the antiques you see in museums, the pieces I make today will last for centuries. I try and know as much about wood as possible. Here in my studio, I have dozens of samples of different types of wood, each with particular qualities, markings and coloring. When I design a piece of furniture, I can be looking, for example, for a balance between light and dark wood. These beautiful woods are alive. They will continue to change, to take on a patina over the years, just as the trees from which they came grow for centuries, much longer than any human being. Marquetry, the technique of inlaying an object with thin sheets of wood called veneers, plays a huge part in my designs. These veneers of varying colours and patterns are set into the surface of an object to create interesting designs and even entire pictures. André Charles Boulle, in the late 17th century, took the technique to new heights of refinement, using not only wood but ivory, metals and turtle shell. I also incorporate different techniques and materials, old and new, into my designs, working with a range of craftsmen to create things which have never been made before. Gilding plays a large role in my designs, and I work closely with Christine Palmer and her team of specialist carvers and gilders. Gold has always had an almost mystical allure, capturing the imagination and bestowing a sense of grandeur and richness on the furniture and interiors. What she's doing here is called water gilding. First, the surface is coated with a gesso, a mixture of chalk or gypsum mixed with an animal glue, and then with bowl, a reddish clay. Then the gilder works slowly across the surface, using water with a tiny amount of animal glue in it to enable the sheets of fine gold leaf to adhere to the object. Finally, the surface is burnished with a tool tipped with a polished agate stone. Today we are discussing a console table I'm designing to go with a mirror we made recently, combining 18th century motifs derived from Robert Adam and contemporary ones created by us. I kind of love the um, acanthus leaves again coming onto those kind of pieces so that yeah. it picks up that element with the acanthus leaf going onto the kind of scroll. That neoclassical move. Yeah, exactly. A little exactly. bit like these. That's the style of them, really. Yeah. That sort of neoclassical style of canvas. Beautiful, isn't it? So you could have that coming down over the leg, as far down as you wanted. You could stop at any point. And you would, you'd carve it in lime? Yeah. And then kind of and work on the... Um, A very thin gesso. Thin not, gesso. Not, not particularly cut in the right. Yeah. Um, as this was done. Yeah, so exactly. Got I love the way that the um, you get the kind of the colour yeah. coming through the bowl underneath there. Yeah. Well, that's an 18th, 18th century piece um, that hasn't been touched since the 18th century. So, Gosh. so you're looking at wonderful English gilding. But look at the depth of that. Mm. It's absolutely remarkable. Yeah. And the gold leaf is wonderful. I often come to museums, both on my own for inspiration but also with clients who may not have looked at the different styles and types of work we find in a place like the Wallace Collection. One might imagine that the experience of commissioning fine furniture today is very different from that of the Georgian era. In fact, the process is almost unchanged. First, there has to be a conversation. Then I will produce some quick sketches which I will later redraw for a more formal presentation then a colour image, which can be a watercolour or a computer-generated one, with wood and fabric samples. Finally, once the client has approved all of this, we produce technical drawings on the pieces themselves. 
My own work is most closely influenced by the fine cabinet makers, such as André Charles Boulle. The figurative gilt bronze mounts in the centre of these doors on this cabinet represent Apollo and Daphne, and Apollo flaying Marcius, mythological stories derived from Ovid's Metamorphoses. Boulle owned a series of drawings after Metamorphoses by Raphael. We know that there were nine wardrobes in his workshop in 1700, so he must have produced these pieces in significant numbers. This once belonged to the Duke of Buckingham. Another great master of marquetry was Jean-Henri Riesner, who produced this desk for the Comte d'Orsay, similar to another he made for Louis XV, delivered to Versailles in 1769. Some of the marquetry motifs, such as the riches of the earth and the sea, are also found on the king's desk. Other elements seem to refer to d'Orsay himself, for example, the dove carrying a letter here on the roll top may refer to his marriage in 1770. Another technique which appeals to me is ormolu, where finely ground, high carat gold mercury amalgam is fired directly onto the object made of bronze. This extraordinary clock was probably made for Jean Paris de Montmartre, banker to the French court and godfather of Madame de Pompadour. The upper clock face now shows Greenwich Mean Time, but from the central dial can be read passages of the sun across the zodiac, the age, longitude, and phases of the moon, and the time anywhere in the northern hemisphere, a map of which is engraved on the revolving circular plate. The decorative wood case below is a later addition. The clock movement is by Michael Stollenwerk, a German master clockmaker working in Paris in the 18th century. By reusing these techniques and combining them with new technologies and modern design, I believe we take the great creations of the past and keep them alive and relevant for life today, making objects which will, in their turn, last long into the future. <laughs>